Hey folks, so this is video two for deploying the Azure Monitor solution for machine learning. Uh, if you haven't seen the first video, please go check that out. That actually talks about what the use case for this is. Uh, we're going to do a uh, tactical how to actually run the scripts and then a strategic walkthrough on how the entire deployment works. I'm David Crook. I'm a senior engineer at Azure Fast Track, and with me I have Sophia. Hello, folks. Here's Sophia Pacifico. I'm an engineer in the Fast Track team. I work with David in this project. Okay. So first thing for how to run and deploy everything for the sample is that we need to have a few dependencies installed. Uh, we've built this in a way that makes it simple to reduce the number of dependencies. So the main things are you're going to need to have Docker installed, you'll have to have Git installed, and you'll need an Azure subscription. So we're going to start with Docker. Uh, you can very simply just go and Google search install Docker for whatever system, if you're Mac, Windows, whatever. Uh, here you can see this is the Windows install, and you would simply go and follow the installation instructions here. Uh, same thing for Git. If you don't have Git, do Git for Windows. Google search, download the Git package, install Git for Windows. Uh, quite straightforward. And lastly, once you have Git, the last aspect of what we need to do is to clone the repository. So you should have a command prompt. Here I have a command prompt and I am in my D drive. I'm under projects and samples. This is just where I like to put stuff that I'm going to delete later. And the command we're going to do is git clone space and then we're going to copy the URL. So from the uh, location. This may be in a different location by the time you watch the video. We'll put a link to a few of the other locations. This should be in the fast track how to as well as eventually a different public facing location. This is the current public facing location. Uh, in the AZ monitor, click the code and you will see that this URL, there's a little copy button here. Click that copy button, open up your command prompt and paste it in here. So we will have git clone that URL, hit enter, and it will begin cloning the entire repository into that location. So if we do a directory, we'll see that now there's an AZ monitor in here. We're going to go ahead and open the rest of this from Visual Studio Code. Okay, so now that we have it cloned and we can see that AZ monitor is in this location, we need to open it so we can make a modification to a dev.env file. So we'll open VS Code. Uh, that's another dependency you'll need, VS Code, or any other editing software should be fine, but VS Code is my preference. We'll open a folder. We'll go to my D drive, projects, samples, AZ monitor. This is the one that we had just cloned select folder and in here we have our folder structure Sophia will talk about this in a minute uh, the important part here is that there's a dev.env file here this will define a few variables that we need for actually deploying the solution um, the target env this is going to be a prefix to a lot of the resources so we want to make this unique my um, user name or email at Microsoft is DeCrook. So we're going to change this. I'm going to be DeCrook007 because James Bond is cool. And save. Uh, you can use the same SQL name and password. That's okay. Just, you know, realize that the rest of the world has access to this as well. And now that we're saved and ready to run, we can actually run the script. To run the script, we're going to change directory in our command prompt. So we're in our command prompt. We're going to cd az monitor. Hit enter. If we type dir, D-I-R, we'll be able to see the files that are in here. In here, we'll see there's a build deploy.cmd. We'll go ahead and run this. To run it, you just type build underscore deploy.cmd, and it's going to start going to town.
At some point in the execution of the script, it's going to ask you to sign in via a web browser. So we go ahead and copy this URL. This is the device login. So we'll highlight it, control copy, open up a window, and paste that. It's going to ask for a code. The code will be in the command prompt as well. So this is B, J, Y, M, Q, S, Q, and L. Just go ahead and copy that. Control copy, paste it. Next, choose which credential you're going to log in with. So I'm going to log in with my corporate. We uh, enforce multi-factor authentication. So I will sign in with my phone. At this point, it has authenticated me and we should see that it will proceed with the deployment in just a second. So it's detected all of my subscriptions. It's initializing the Terraform backend and will continue with the entire deployment. All right, and that's it. The uh, application is deployed. So we'll go ahead and log into the Azure portal, which is portal.azure.com. And we'll go find the resource group that just got deployed along with all the resources. And we'll see that there's an AZ monitor dash the crook 007 hit in there. And we've got our app service, our app service plan, function app, application insight, storage account, and a SQL database and server. Okay, guys. Now the idea is to walk through the um, how it works and the folder structure composition. First, we will be able to see a Docker file that installed a lot of dependencies. Basically, this installed a basic dependencies, installed also a Terraform that is an automation tool that we will use to install the infrastructure and connectivity things. I will show you in a bit how this works. Then we will start Azure CLI. This, we will use this tool to install the code of the web app and the function. Um, we have the Azure Function Core tools. We are not using that tool for the moment. And also we have the .NET Core SDK. We use this to build the web app that is running on .NET Core. Um, we have also two tools that uh, are about Kubernetes. We are not using those. And finally, at the end of the fight, we have the section that uh, adds some path. And also we have in function six, we have the line. This will help us to um, convert in different lines and in settings that, that will depend on your operation systems. So we are using these commands to make sure that uh, we convert all the l different lines ending uh, in the correct one. And finally, we have the command that will deploy, will run the deploy all dot sh that will start deploying the infrastructure and the code of the different resources. Okay, next uh, we will show you the deploy folder that basically contain uh, the depl deploy scripts that we will run to first deploy the Terraform files that have the infrastructure and the connectivity of our uh, resources. So here we are doing, as David mentioned at the beginning, um, AC login, where you have to enter the URL and the code showed in the, that uh, David showed in the command prompt. Uh, then we are going to the Terraform uh, folder that we have the different uh, a structure of how to deploy the, the infrastructure and the connectivity. So here we have the uh, terraform deploy.sh file. Uh, essentially what we're doing on lines 23 through 26 is mapping the dev.env environment variables that came in through our configuration into Terraform environment variables. These are located in the variables.tf, which Sophia will go through in a few minutes. And that dictates uh, what our SQL user is going to be, what the prefix is, what the uh, location, East US, West US, so forth and so on is going to be. Uh, line 31 is essentially initializing the Azure Resource Manager, uh, which is defined in the main.tf section. 
Uh, line 34 is planning what the deployment is going to look like. Uh, we have a state flag here and we're using local state. Uh, in the Docker deploy, we used a volume out flag so that if you can run into issues and want to run it again, uh, it will do desired state configuration, which is using the Terraform to reach a particular state with the current state. So plan is going to read through all of the Terraform files that are there and then create what it thinks it should do from a create, delete, update type perspective on the Azure resources, and then persist that plan as a TF plan dot out. Line 38 essentially is going to uh, take the plan and run that plan with an auto approve. It won't ask for you to say yes or no. It's just going to go ahead and run it. And then it's going to save the state of what is in Azure when it's done as the new terraform.tf state file. Okay, now we will talk about the variables main and output. Let's go to variables. As David mentioned, here we have the variables, default variables that uh, we will then be overwrite them using the dev.env file. Uh, so uh, just um, those are the default one. Then we have the main TFE, TF, where we are basically deploying the in infrastructure and connectivity. Um, we have the storage, application inside, application plan, function, SQL Server, SQL Database, and then we have the app service plan and uh, some settings. And finally, we have the output that basically the only thing that can, uh, has is the SQL connection string that we will automatically um, add it on our web app to make sure that they are connected. Okay, the next steps is deploy the function code where we are uh, using deploy function dot sh in the, this specific file we are first creating a blob container where we will save some information as an output and then using ac commands we we are zipping the function uh, code and deploy it to our function app okay guys the last step on the deploy all dot sh is to deploy the web app code where we are doing this on the deploy app.sh file. Here, something important to know is that on line six, we are open the firewalls to the world. What it's insecure, but I accomplish uh, what we need to do to make sure that the web app is connected with the SQL database. In the line eight, we are using the, or we are replacing the connection string and in line 11, we are using that connection string to put it on the app settings.json to make sure that the web app uh, is able to reach that specific database. Then we are migrating the um, database and finally we are using the .NET publish to build the web app and then zip that code and deploy it using a C command uh, to deploy the web app. All right, so now that we understand how everything goes, we're going to go and make sure that it's uh, deployed. We can see that it is here. It's deployed. It's in Decrook 007, like uh, we had shown earlier. But an important thing to know is how do we get into the app service or the web application and get to the application URL. So we'll go and find the app service. It's got a little globe. Click on that. It should pop up. And inside of it, we'll see that there's a URL, azmonitor-app-service-decrook007 Azure websites.net. We'll open that in a new tab. And we've got our to-do list. Uh, some of the telemetry that it's going to generate will start uh, creating 500s and 404s until you create some new things. So uh, we'll want to go in here and actually start creating some new items. So just, you know, second thing, pick some dates and create. We'll go ahead and create one more just for a good measure. It'll be our third thing, even though it's our second thing. It's confused. And that's it. Go and create. It generates random numbers between, what, 1 and 5 or 1 and 10? One in ten. One in ten. So if you have five, if you add ten things, it'll stop 
generating 500s and 404s automatically in App Insights. And with that, that's the end of the video for the deployment walkthrough. So we've covered what the dependencies are, how to deploy it, uh, what all the steps are, what all the scripts are doing, and shown a little bit around how to get into the application service, navigate to it, and create some to-dos to generate some additional telemetry. Uh, thank you very much, and glad uh, to have you watch the video. Thanks.